Accident investigators working in the English Channel to inspect the wreckage of the aircraft carrying the footballer Emiliano Sala and pilot David Ibbotson say that tragically one occupant is visible inside. Officials say an underwater search using a remote controlled vehicle revealed the wreckage on the seabed and that they're now consulting the families of the men to decide on the next steps. Well, the plane, which was travelling from Nantes in France to Cardiff, disappeared two weeks ago. Wreckage has been found over several days by a private investigation and was seen initially on a stretch of beach in Sertainville on the uh, French coast there. This report is from our correspondent, Richard Galpin. This is the first sight of the wreckage of the small plane which disappeared two weeks ago with Emiliano Sala and the pilot, David Ibbotson, on board. It's now resting on the seabed more than 60 metres below the surface. The discovery followed an intensive search yesterday morning in an area of four square nautical miles north of Guernsey. This boat, commissioned by Emiliano Sala's family after a fundraising campaign, made the breakthrough using high-tech sonar equipment. Listen, we wanted to go out there and find the plane. We're pleased that that happened. Um, it's going to be, you know, people use the word closure. This is just the first step. It's a long, long way. Uh, but at least this is the route for people, for them to have answers. Emiliano Sala was being flown back from France to Wales by David Ibbotson. Sala, who was about to start playing for Cardiff City, had sent messages during the flight expressing concern about the plane. And now, not only has the wreckage of the aircraft been found on the seabed, but also a body. Before this was known, his family had made clear they wanted the plane to be recovered from the water. I've spoken with the family last night by text and also through uh, Emiliano's agent, um, Mesa and Dai, and the family desperately want the plane to be recovered. They feel that's the only way, that's the pathway to answer these questions. What happened to the plane? Why it crashed? You know, why, why was Emilia, Emiliano's life taken? These latest developments will add to the outpouring of grief amongst Cardiff City fans. Salah was to have been a star striker for the team. At the match played at the weekend, there were many tributes to him, the manager in tears. Following the discovery of the wreckage, air accident investigators say they will consult with the families of Miliano Sala and David Ibbotson about the next steps. Richard Galpin, BBC News. And let's get the latest now from our correspondent, Mike Wilkins, who can join me now from uh, Guernsey. Um, and of course, this search, this private search, was, was crowd-funded, wasn't it, Mike? Yeah, that's right, Ben. Um, it followed Guernsey authorities when they were doing their air search. They decided to call it off after around three days. And the family of Emilio, Emiliano Sala uh, wanted to carry on searching. So essentially, they launched an appeal and they've managed to raise uh, more than £300,000 to help fund this private search. Uh, now that private search itself uh, has proved to be successful. Um, they managed to locate the aircraft on the seabed some around uh, well, more than 60 metres uh, down uh, after only about uh, two or three hours of searching. And uh, the man who was leading that search, David Mayer, said that one of the reasons they were able to find it so quickly was uh, it essentially was very close to where the last uh, radar contact was with the aircraft. Uh, it has, though, caused uh, some people to criticise the search teams here in Guernsey, saying that uh, how come uh, a private search has managed to find it in such a, a, a small space of time uh, and you didn't manage to. But uh, David Mins has actually defended the Guernsey search, saying that uh, they did everything they could do and they were searching on the surface for any debris. Uh, and he said that if there had been any, that he was confident that they would have found it. Uh, whereas his search was obviously underwater with specialist equipment, those kind of robotic uh, submersibles with cameras. Um, but uh, today, sadly, um, there's even more detail coming out on the story with those haunting images of the, f of the uh, damaged fuselage uh, with the registration number. And, and of course, Ben, the fact that we now know that uh, at least one body is in that wreckage. Yeah, and so what happens next, Mike? Because they've located the wreckage, they've seen the wreckage. What, 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 what's the next stage? 
Well, the family uh, have said that they want the aircraft to be recovered. Uh, however, it's not that straightforward, and the uh, Accidents Investigation Branch is currently speaking to the families of both Emiliano Sala and David Ibbotson, the pilot, to find out if they both want to have the aircraft uh, recovered and lifted up. Uh, but it's not that easy to do. These waters out uh, in the Channel Islands are, are notoriously treacherous. You've got some very strong tides uh, and currents. Uh, so the Air Accident Investigations Branch has to factor in that the risk if they were to send divers down, and also the fact that it could disrupt the wreckage. Uh, and there, of course, they're looking for clues as it is as to what caused the crash. So they don't want to jeopardize the chance of finding uh, some, of, some of the uh, indicators. Uh, but also, sadly, it could also disrupt uh, the bodies inside, which of course would be a very uh, sensitive uh, issue to, to have to deal with. So um, there is the cost, there is the risk, and of course, uh, this time of year, there's the weather that they have to factor in. Um, but we're waiting for the AIB. They said they will release an interim report uh, in the coming weeks uh, where they will try to explain what they feel are the causes of this crash. Okay, Mike, for the moment, thank you. Mike Wilkins there joining us live from Guernsey.